troubles will soon be o'er. Happy forevermore when we meet on that shore, free from all care, rising up in the sky, telling this world goodbye. Homeward we is coming soon, morning or night, many will, many will bear their doom, trumpets will sound, all of the dead shall rise, righteous meeting in the sky, going where no one dies, heavenward While on life's journey, on life's journey here below, we have a refuge as we go. For on life's journey, on this journey home above, above, we're overshadowed by His love. Yes, I'm overshadowed by His love. His boundless love. I have protection, yes, I have protection from, the from the Lord above. He walks beside me. Jesus walks beside me every day, every passing day. And He will guide me. And I know He'll guide me all the way. Yes, all the way. We'll fear no danger, danger, fear no danger, on our wild and on our way. He'll safely guide us, safely guide us, day by day, every passing day, under the wings of heaven's love. Sometimes the way seems dark and low, so dark and low. Then we remember where we are, His very own. We have a assurance from above.
While we sing this song, everybody can move around and fellowship. We'll be going to prayer here in a little bit. <coughs> Congregation, some come in later. We didn't get to speak to. We welcome you all here. Glad to see you. Our visitors that's here, we're yeah. thankful for all of you. And, uh, 
Uh, some of you have slipped off from Echo and other places to be with us. We're, we're thankful of that. It's good to have that fellowship. And good to have you with us this morning. As always, we're here to worship. I hope these songs that we've been singing have caused your mind to gather in and begin to think about the good things of God, His Scriptures, things and the blessings that He's provided for us. And, that we might be able to come here this morning and set aside our worries and problems and cares and just come and thank Him and worship Him, giving the glory that He's deserving of uh, because He's definitely worthy of all praise and honor. So it's good to see all of you. We're getting ready to go to prayer. So if you've got an unspoken request or like to have an interest in this prayer by the uplift of hands, God bless. A lot of hands all over the house. Anybody have a spoken request this morning? Yeah, I talked to Diane this morning, Brother She's up there with sister-in-law. She's been sick, been in the hospital. She asked us to pray for her. Bless. We mentioned Friday night, a lot of sickness around. Brother Clifford and Sister Sue's down with the flu, stomach flu, not doing well, so remember them. I don't know where Sister Vicki and Sister Betty are. Missed them this weekend, so I hope they're not sick too. It's not I think like her uh, daughter flew in from Florida, didn't they? Might yes, have. Might have. And uh, so I figure that they're with her. Forget Jakey. He's having cataract surgery Tuesday, I guess. Yeah. And some other surgery coming up in the future, too. So remember him. Helen and Isabel are both sick. So remember them. God bless. But Tony, I've got a brother in law go have some carpal tunnel surgery. He's unsafe, man. Just just pray for him. And also, Brother Harvey Maynard's son, grandson, Cole. Took another seizure around there the other night, and he'd been six months without one. They're really, they're really desiring the church to pray for our place. Place. Mm-hmm. Who'd he say? Anybody else? Remember Sister Donna? Yeah. Red Jack. Yeah. yeah. A couple other young ones we mentioned Friday night. Little Sophie, Brother Terry's. Granddaughter, she's been in the hospital this week. Her platelet's been real low. They've been asking for prayer. She's home now. And also, Dell and Teresa's little grandson, Timmy, needs their prayers, too. He's doing a little better. But, uh, keep those little ones in your prayers. Cold, too, we mentioned. Uh, you don't have to be old to get sick. That's right. You don't have to be old to die, either. So remember all these young ones, too, that's facing problems. Just our young people. They need our prayers, too. Remember the brother came in the other night up there. He's uh, he's getting ready to face the devil every day now. Mm-hmm. Uh, just remember him and bless him to stay strong and let him know where he can go to for healing. Yeah. Bless the ones that's, that's heard the word and shine away from it. So many of them. Uh, yes. Before we go to prayer, if there be an unsaved with us this morning, just by raising your hand, you'd like for us to remember you when we bow down. One with that mind. God bless. Be another. God bless. Let's remember them. Remember our lost children. Yes. Yes. Oh. I know back before our revival, every one of us had lost we were praying for. Let's let's continue praying for them. Yes. Several we've mentioned coming here that's raised their hand and walked the aisle. Let's remember them in other places too. I know some of the Echo Grove Jr. mentioned some at Brush Creek Friday night. So let's remember all of our lost. Pray for the service. Pray for each other. And as always, when we bow down, let's be thankful for what he's done for us. Anybody else? Brother Tony, I got a special prayer request. My girlfriend doesn't have a very good home life. Hasn't for a long time. Both of her brothers are alcoholics and they're both out in sin and out in the world. And her daddy, both of, she don't have nobody. Everybody hates her and her family and she feels at home with our family and I'm thankful that she does. I thought about that the whole way down the road, how blessed that I am to have a good home life and how blessed that I am to have the Lord in my life especially. We don't have, we have not because we ask not, Brother Tony. And that is the problem of today's world is just going around and round and round. And I hope that 
I live my life most accordingly to the way that God would have it to be. God bless. God you know, Brother Junior mentioned Friday night about how that there's obstacles that we let build up between us and God. Yeah. And how the sinner people will have obstacles that will keep them out of the church. So let us pray that God will help us to get by these obstacles that comes up before us that might hinder us from worshiping God and especially the sinner people from coming to God. Yeah. Yes. Nobody else? Everybody that's willing, come down this way and pray if you want to down here or where you're at. Like for Brother Roger if he feels like it to lead us in prayer this morning. Let's everybody pray. Most holy and righteous, heavenly Father. Thank you, Jesus. Lord of God, we truly bless you, Lord, the Lord that you provided for us. Thank you, Lord. Let our opportunity be to bow down on our knees and call out upon you. All of our needs. Lord of God, you've been to us and how blessed we are. We are the Lord of your The blessings that you shower down. We come to you this morning needing your help, needing your mercy, needing your precious blood to atone us, to forgive us, to cleanse us of our sins. This morning, would you smile down on this service today, Lord? This being the arrangement, Heavenly Father. We, through your Son, and that precious Spirit, my brothers and sisters, as we come all together here today, Lord, that we would begin to allow that light, the glorious gospel, to shine within us, that it might begin to reach hearts and minds of those that are gathered here today that don't know that and cause them remission of our sins. Heavenly Father, this morning, how good you've been to us. We thank you for salvation. We thank you, Lord, for this place that we're blessed about out in here this morning. Heavenly Father, as we come here, help us to set aside the worries and the problems of this world. Help us, Heavenly Father, to give you a service that you be pleased with here today. God bless each and every soul and home that's represented here. Lord, that you would touch them in a special way today as only you can do, God. If you, O oh Lord, would be able to uplift your people here. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, to be fed from that bountiful table from all Lord, many, many requests that we heard here this morning. For those that are doing you, those that are standing in this way, those that are sick and afflicted, those that are burdened, those that are having problems in this world. Lord, that have reached out this morning and asked for these brothers and sisters to call out upon them on their behalf. Heavenly Father, would you look down on them today, dear God, that we might be able, Father, to see you intervene on the stage of action in their lives and that you touch and heal and uplift your Father as only you can. Lord, our friends and brothers and sisters who are going through problems and valleys, Lord, would you lift them up this morning? Give them the courage, dear God, that they need while that they're living here on this earth. Well, Heavenly Father, we praise you for salvation, as you said. We thank you, Lord, for the hope that you've given us, the feeling, dear Father, that we can have in these earthen vessels here upon this earth, dear Father, that begin to uplift us and begins to give us the blessing of life. Dear God, we pray, dear Heavenly Father, that we might be able to be one, dear Father, that we can be one. Dear God, bless and wear our children on that day, my Lord. Oh God, how much we need to hear that. Lord, not that we'd get a pat on the back, dear Father. Not that we'd get a pat of star in our crown, Lord. No more to know that we will escape that awful place of punishment and misery and fire and fury for to be able to be with you over on the other side. Dear Heavenly Father, that we'll be able to praise you, give you glory, give you honor throughout eternity. And we know, Lord, we need to do it here. So many distractions of this life, so many distractions that the devil throws in our way to hinder us, dear God, from giving you the glory that we should. So, Lord, help us to stay 
today, folks. Help us to run the race as we need to here upon this earth. Praise your name for salvation and what you've done for us through your son. It's in him we ask this morning. Oh, God, we got to be very careful. Oh, Lord, who we talk to and who we see with, oh, God, and who we run around with, Lord. Because, oh, God, that could be a bad light, Lord, upon the sinner people out here. Help us to make good decisions, oh, God. And, Lord, would you bless our moderator, our assistant moderator, Lord, and all of our deacons. Lord, they've got a hard job. Oh, Lord, we hear a few problems. Uh, they hear them all, Lord. Lord, oh, God, give them the wisdom, oh, God, to help the ones that come to them, Lord, with problems. Oh, God, bless this little church, oh, God, that it might grow. And, Lord, we hope, Lord, that we're not the one that's standing in some of these sinners' way, Lord. If we are, Lord, help us, oh, God, to do better each and every day. And, Lord, would you bless uh, the brother that might come before us. Lord, would you visit his mind, oh, God, and he might uh, preach the very thing, oh, God, uh, that we need, Lord, because this is the only place, Lord, that I know to get strength uh, for this inner man, oh, God. Lord, we thank you this morning one more time. Oh, God, would you go with us uh, through this life? Oh, God, would you forgive us of our sins and shortcomings? Oh, Lord, but most of all, when it comes time to leave it, Lord, would you take us home to an eternal rest, oh God, that you see can go away and to prepare a place for us. Lord, I pray, oh God, that I be one of those, Lord, in that number in that morning. Lord, these favors and blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Peter said one day, Lord, it's good for us to be here. Yeah. And I said before, I don't know that he knew exactly what he was talking about when he said that. I feel that it's good for us to be here today, to gather in a manner that we could give him praise, because we're all needed in the body. As we come, we may think we don't, we don't put much into the service, but you'll get just as much out of this service as you put in it. You may not say a word with this mouth of yours, you may not move that hand one bit, but you can put a whole lot in those thoughts of yours from the heart into this service today. And we think about why we're here and what we need. And we think about so many different reasons of people coming out. Somebody mentioned last weekend about why we come, or maybe on Friday. We may have different thoughts and different reasons why we come, but the main reason, as we said earlier, was to give Him glory, give Him praise. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's not about Brother Tommy. It's all about Him this morning. So let's give Him praise. We come out and gather like this. We need this strength. We need this fellowship. Some that sit at home and lonely all down through the week. Probably don't get a person come in their, in their home or don't get a phone call. Sit at home. We've lost their spouses. What a blessing it is for them to come out and just be with you all here this morning. I think we take that for granted. Those that's lost loved ones that have been grieving down on the inside and some of our mothers that so often bring their little ones here, what a blessing it is for them just to see those little ones running up and down the aisle and crying and playing. We, we don't know sometimes just our presence being here, what it means to other people. Just, just being here and being a part of the number right. and being in the congregation. Saying a little prayer that God would bless this singer or that preacher or just bless these individuals that have gathered here this morning. It's all what God wants us to do. And that's why he said to not forsake this, that we need this and we need to gather like this to gain the strength when we go out there. Amen. We don't have each other like we do here. Yeah, I can pick up my phone or whatever or stop by and see you down through the week. But when we come here, he knew we needed this to gain strength while we're out there in the world, whether it's sitting at home lonely by ourselves or whether we're on the job with the old devil raging all around us. He knows what we need. And in this service today, he can give every one of us the strength to face this next week. If time permits, we may not live to get out of this service. I don't know. But he's able to give us exactly what we need here today. So let's pray to that effect and get our mind where it needs to be while we're here. Because that old devil's going to try to distract us this way or distract us that way. So let's try to stay focused here this morning. Does anybody have a song on your mind today? 
you feel like you need to sing, we want you to mind the Lord. Brother Tony, I, I will see right ahead. Plenty of time. You know, this is a song that maybe don't touch other people, but it's really precious to me. And, you know, we look at this old world, and we've just got a buried home here on this God's footstool, but I'm looking for a home eternal one day after a while. And Brother Tony mentioned about why that we come to church. Let me explain a little bit about why that I come to church. It gives me strength to fight off the things that that the devil puts before me. And you know what? I think probably within myself that if I never went to church, I would probably never open this book and read it any. Because the brethren says things and I go home and I, I read after the brethren because I believe that's my duty to know when the brethren is telling me the truth or not. I think it's your duty. So think about these things because it's so special. And I really worry about maybe in my lifetime that it might get to where I can't come to church. Uh It does. It bothers me. But I'm still trusting in the good Lord to lead and direct me in the way that he'd have me to go. This world is not my home. I'm just passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh, Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then, Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me. From heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. They're all expecting me, that's one thing I know. My Savior pardoned me, and now I onward go. Now I know He'll take me through, though I'm weak and poor, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh, Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then, Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Just up in glory land, they'll live eternally. The saints on every hand are shouting victory. Their song and sweetest praise drift back from heaven's shore. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh, Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then, Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. No, I can't feel at home in this world anymore. I love you all. I want to go to heaven with each and every one of you. You just don't know how much help that you are to, to be able to come out and look upon your faces and, and gather with you and worship with you one more time because we don't know. We don't have no promise of tomorrow. That's right. That's but true. you know, children, I want to live every minute as though it's my last minute on earth. Amen. Bless you. Enjoy that. When we awake in his life, then we'll be satisfied. Uh, Brother Bruce asked me the other day, he said, can you, can you think of a, a day, what it would be like to not have one worry, not one yeah. thing to bother us in any way? I said, no, I can't think of that. I can't imagine that. 
But that's the way it's going to be up there. That's right. right. I thought yeah, what I'm he to go there. when he mentioned yeah. coming to church, and I'll never forget what Brother Junior Lambert said. He, he was in the stand, and he was talking to us young uh, Christian or so. He said, uh, uh, go to church while you can, while you're able. He said, the time may come when you'd love to hear the gospel bell ring, right. and, and you can't do right. it. Right. <clears throat> but then Nathaniel said, we needed to learn another song. <laughs> he kind of get in charge of singing the same one, but that's the only one we know. <clears throat> Once Elijah being tempted by Jehovah's foe, fled for refuge to the mountain, when the storm arose, there he found a safe pavilion where he could reside. I am hiding like Elijah from the storm outside. I am hiding like Elijah in the rifted stone. And sometimes I feel just like him that I can't go on. Then a voice from heaven whispers in the rock abide. I am hiding like Elijah from the storm outside. When the clouds of sorrow gather, like a raging storm and the way is dark before me i shall fear no harm i am trusting in my savior whatsoever be tied i am hiding like elijah from the storm outside I am hiding like Elijah in the rifted stone. And sometimes I feel just like him that I can't go on. Then a voice from heaven whispers in the rock abide. I am hiding like Elijah. From the storm outside, there are many other Christians in this world today. I can feel the Spirit moving when I hear them pray, and it gives me consolation when my soul is tried. I am hiding like Elijah from the storm outside. I am hiding like Elijah in the rifted stone. And sometimes I feel just like him that I can't go on. Then a voice from heaven whispers in the rock abide. I am hiding like Elijah from the storm outside. He's our only hiding place. When he leaves the meditorial throne, Brother Tommy, there'll not be another prayer reach heaven's country. Today, he said, is, is the uh, day of salvation. Yeah. Now's the time to call upon him while he can be found. Seek him. He's, he's out there. He's, he's got his arms outstretched. Well, the Bible don't say this, but I feel like he's got his arms outstretched saying, come, come, come unto me all ye ends of the earth. He didn't leave none out. That's right. Come to me and be saved. He's knocking today on your heart. Although the storms of life may rage, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is there. Amen. I believe that this morning. Right. He's good. He's all wise and mighty powerful God. We have so little faith in him, Brother Tom. 
because we're such a simple-minded body of person. I believe that he died on the cross for one purpose, uh -huh. to save my life and to save the whole human family if they just have it. There's only one problem that we have in this life, Brother Tony, that we just keep setting our stakes out farther and farther in this uh -huh. life. The only reason that we have this problem is because we're so weak-minded and we can't understand, can't even imagine what kind of trouble we would be in if we didn't have the Lord in our life for the time. Amen. I'm thankful that I have him sure. most of <coughs> my, I'm thankful that I found him. <coughs> Raise me up right on a solid foundation, which is my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We built on that solid foundation, Brother Tony. We have a home in heaven after this life is over. I want to go there after this life is over, don't you? If I go there, there'll be one joy Amen. forever and forever, won't they? Amen. One happy day. Won't have to worry about our loved ones leaving us in this life. Won't have to worry about one simple worry in this lifetime, will we, brother? Won't have one worry. I'm thankful that I'll have a place up there. I had a promise one day that I'd get to go there after this life was over. And he said that I would, and I believe that he would. Because my Lord doesn't lie. He's not the author of confusion either. Bless your heart. Anybody else have a song this morning?
Take this back home with me. It's going to be a long week. That's right. I got this song yeah. on my mind. No hurry. The other night, Brother Jamie, when he preached that, and you know how much I've talked to you about that, that that's yeah. really on my mind a lot. And that this song stays on my mind a lot too. We'd ask for your prayers while we try to sing this. <clears throat> like a prodigal son. <clears throat> I wandered in darkness and I traded my life for a worldly good time. No peace in my heart I ever could find. And I got so tired. And I got so tired of eating after. So I believe I'll go home and eat with the Father. The table is spread. The table is spread and they're waiting for me. I can see the Father, Father coming down, down to greet me. Lord, I'm willing to be. Lord, I'm willing to be just a servant for Thee. Like a prodigal son, I wandered from Jesus, but the good shepherd saw through the heat and the cold. The Just to find this lost sheep, just to find this lost sheep that was hungry and cold. So I believe I'll go home and eat with the Father. The table is spread, the table is spread, and they're waiting for me. I can see. That should be our thought every day. That's all we are, my brother. Just to serve. That's right. Praise the Lord. That's your brother, Jim. Every hope. Joy within. My hope is a 
you're talking about getting hungry. You know, it seemed like about Wednesday, Tuesday or Wednesday, I started getting a little bit hungry. I started looking forward to that yeah. Friday service. Yeah. It seems like seems like they're just so good. And, and I, I think that that's because we get a little bit hungry. Yeah. I think if we ate every day, we might not get that hungry. But I thank God that he puts it in our hearts and our minds mm -hmm. together out here like we do. And he blesses us for the efforts that we make. You know, I had a thought a while ago talking about the table of God and being set. It's been set for a long time. Yes, it has. And you know, we naturally will take food and we'll stick it in the refrigerator. And it'll go bad in a few days. Won't be able to eat it. Might make us sick. Might even kill us. But you know that food that's on that table, it will never grow old. Right. It will never hurt us, no. but it will help us. Amen. I thought about that a while ago, and I thank God for the thoughts that He puts in my mind. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness, mm -hmm. yeah. for they shall be filled. Yeah. We have that desire. We took that desire, that want to, to get in the church when we were unsaved. And it continues in our life as a Christian to have that desire, to want that. It's like Brother Jeff said, to feed from that table that ever stays yeah. full. And drink from that fountain that never runs dry. What a blessing it is. It's been a good place to be this morning. I'm thankful for what I've already felt that just a quiet meek humble spirit's been here it just seems like it just speaks peace to us yeah, when we sit here and I've I, we need that sometimes they're shouting all over the house sometimes it's it's a little drier than others and when it's dry and not blowing too much that's a good time to sow seed but I'm thankful for the calmness that I felt here this morning I've experienced it's been good to be here already we're thankful Brother Tommy's here this morning, yes. and uh, we want him to come, take all the time, it's all his, and uh, he kind of slipped in on us, and I'm glad that he did. I feel like the Lord's in the arrangements today, and uh, just like <laughs> Friday night, I didn't have to call on one brother. The Lord's took care of this service here tonight, today, and I'm thankful he sent Brother Tommy our way, so be much in prayer for him, that the Lord would bless him and give us, as we said earlier, Exactly what we need here today. Really Tom. Bless you. Glad you're here today. Bless your heart, buddy. Good to be with you all this morning. Enjoyed what we felt here this morning. Yeah. Felt that I felt that calmness that Brother Tony talked about. I felt God's spirit in it. Had a lot of good thoughts this morning since I've been here, and uh, we try to we try to mind the spirit what it says, and I felt like it led us this way this morning, and uh, we thought we might. Sometimes we try to sing a song, get our, our minds all over the place. We never come with never come with a particular thing on our mind. Uh, in particular, sometimes. Men are skilled enough in the Word that they can, they can chart out what they want to say and where they're going in the Bible. I can't do it. I never have been able to. And uh, I find myself envying that gift. Mm -hmm. But uh, mine ain't what theirs is, and I'll just have to try to stay right where he put me at. That's and and uh, I find that little is much if God blesses it. Amen. He's, Amen. he's blessed me for this far and I don't know why he wouldn't the rest of the way as long as it's my mind to be as Brother Chris's song and just want to do what we can and want to live in such a way to see what it looks like over there sure don't want to miss that No, right. and, uh, but uh, we might sing one 
this song here. And you all pray, and I, I, I'd like to be able to do just what the good Lord want me to do this morning. And I, I need his direction with that as we go farther on. Amen. <clears throat> Once in the stillness of the late midnight hour, I felt the presence of the Lord's saving power. I fell on my knees and I cried to him there. Oh, merciful Savior, hear a lost sinner's prayer. Well, every hour and every day, well, I'm leaning on Jesus, the rock of my soul. I'm singing his praises wherever I go. I'll never forget that night on my knees, the joy of that I has never left me. It's life's sweetest memory that time can erase. I'm saved by His mercy, redeemed by His grace. Well, every hour and ever. Well, every moment and every way, I'm leaning on Jesus, the rock of my soul. I'm singing His praises wherever I go. You know, there's not a feeling like the time the Lord saved us. That's right. <laughs> and uh, it, it behooves us to go back there and visit that yeah. very often. Yeah. And uh, there's times that, uh, you know, Brother Tony mentioned how good it was that whether we don't say a word or not, how good it is to feel, be one that feels the seats. And to, and just to hug or to see somebody, how that, that all plays its part. And the Bible teaches us to provoke one another unto good works. Right. And one of the ways you can do that is when you come in and you see certain people there, it encourages you to keep coming back and know that it's the right thing to do to keep going to church. And lots of times in the Bible, people has helped other people by what they said or what they done or their conduct. Yes. And uh, so it, it, it's really a, a vital importance uh, to provoke one another unto good works just by showing your presence that you're a member of God's family and, and that you like to be with them. And they, there's so much that's said, though no words are spoken, just by the actions. Right. There's so much said by the actions of people. And really, your actions speak louder than your words do anyhow. Because right. words come easy, but when people see that, that your, your, your desire is to do what God wants and be in His family, that, that tells them something and they feel that. And it causes us to enjoy each other's fellowship and our salvation together. The good Lord wants it like that. Yeah. That's the reason one writer said how good and how pleasant it was. Uh, for brethren to dwell together. I, I believe that meant for the brothers and sisters all to be together as far Amen. as my part is. And then he went ahead to tell us how good it was about the ointment upon Aaron, his beard, and all the way down, and the dew of Hermon, and how that, how, how good that is. And you could go search out 
how good those two things were, my friend. Uh, but it, it tells us that there's no no way to gauge, no way to measure uh, how good it is that we live right and do right and gather out like this and, and have our spiritual strength renewed. There's no way uh, man can put a measuring stick uh, on how important it is for us uh, uh, to come out like this. I'd be afraid uh, uh, to not come out like this. Uh, uh, for one thing, if I didn't come for no other reason, uh, uh, it would be because I feared God uh, and He told us to. Uh, uh, but there... <coughs> There's a lot of reason why uh, uh, that we ought to come other uh, uh, than just pure fear. Uh, uh, there's, a, there's a joy about this uh, uh, coming together, uh, uh, my friend, and it seems like uh, if you ain't careful, uh, uh, you'll take one another for granted uh, and you'll find yourself uh, uh, needing some company. Uh, it's lonely out here uh, in this world uh, and it's good sometimes uh, uh, to know you got brothers and sisters that will come alongside of you when the going gets rough. My friend, this world, you may say the storm of life may come, but there's really one giant storm and it's lasted ever since I've got in the church. They've been a storm, but there's a stillness and a calmness right in the middle of it. And at your worst time, you can feel the Savior with you. And you can have a joy inside, knowing that He's bigger than the storm that rages around you. At any moment, at any time, He can say, Peace, be still, and mark your path. He said that the steps of the righteous, the ordered of the Lord let him direct your path one writer said in all thy ways trust him and he you can lean on him in all your ways acknowledge him trust him my friend he never lost a battle Jesus is our commander he's in charge my friend and it may seem like uh, things is out of control, uh, but Jesus, uh, uh, He's in full. Uh, uh, control today uh, and there ain't nothing uh, uh, can pluck us uh, out of his hand uh, it's a good thing to be uh, in the hands uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, uh, this morning uh, and I'm thankful uh, uh, for every brother and sister uh, I'm thankful uh, uh, for the church here uh, uh, what it means to me uh, uh, to be one in it uh, and have so many uh, around us uh, uh, you can feel like uh, uh, the least in the crowd. Uh, uh, but as long uh, as you're in the crowd uh, of the family, uh, uh, that's what counts. Uh, uh, being one uh, uh, in the family. Uh, uh, Jesus told us uh, uh, not to be heady uh, and high-minded, uh, uh, but to be meek uh, and lowly uh, uh, like He was. Uh, it's alright uh, uh, to feel like you ain't much, uh, uh, but just be thankful uh, uh, you are what you are uh, uh, by the grace of God uh, uh, my friend uh, it don't matter uh, about being big and high uh, uh, just a member uh, in the body uh, uh, one member uh, in the body uh, uh, that's what it's all about uh, and God will supply uh, uh, every member uh, of his body uh, uh, he will direct uh, uh, nourishment to it uh, uh, that it may grow uh, and it may be fruitful here. Uh, uh, so no matter where uh, you fit in the body, uh, you trust in Jesus uh, and follow His Spirit. Uh, it'll make you satisfied uh, uh, down on the inside uh, and it'll uh, uh, make you fruitful. Uh, and my friend, uh, uh, in His body, uh, and my friends, He said, uh, I want to preach it, uh, I sow it, uh, another to water it, uh, uh, but it's God uh, that gives the increase. Uh, uh, that's what matters uh, 
Uh, Paul said one place, uh, I'm glad I baptized uh, uh, none of you. Uh, uh, you've got to where you're looking to each other, uh, uh, heady and big, uh, uh, my friends. Uh, uh, but the least uh, in the kingdom uh, is just as great as another, uh, uh, my friends. Uh, uh, the thing is, uh, uh, to just be low, uh, uh, the Bible said, uh, uh, condescend, uh, that means to come down uh, and be of low degree. Uh, uh, Jesus even said, uh, I'm meek and lowly uh, in heart, uh, uh, but you bring your burdens uh, and come to me uh, and you'll find rest uh, uh, for your soul. Uh, uh, my friend, uh, uh, the rest uh, uh, for my body, uh, it lays out a hedge here. Uh, I stay tired uh, all the time, uh, uh, but there's rest uh, uh, to match this soul. Uh, I have rest uh, in my my soul, uh, uh, my friend, uh, uh, for I know who I am, uh, and I know whose I am, uh, and I find rest uh, and consolation uh, in that. Uh, but the rest for the body uh, uh, is out yonder somewhere, uh, and I long for it, uh, and I seek it, uh, uh, like Bruce sung about. Uh, uh, my friends, uh, uh, what are you going to do? Uh, uh, listen, uh, uh, this world uh, is a waxing and worse uh, and worse uh, and the church uh, is uh, getting closer home uh, all the time uh, and Jesus told us uh, uh, to look to him uh, uh, no matter what uh, uh, circumstance uh, uh, we find ourselves in uh, uh, whether we're being blessed uh, uh, with plenty uh, or where we barely got enough uh, uh, Paul said uh, uh, that we uh, uh, should have learned by now uh, uh, to be satisfied uh, uh, with whatsoever state uh, uh, we find ourselves in uh, uh, to be satisfied uh, uh, knowing that Jesus uh, is the keeper uh, of our soul uh, and this body uh, is uh, going back to the dust uh, uh, even while we speak to you uh, uh, my friends uh, and he told us uh, uh, to let this hope uh, of Jesus uh, and rest for the body uh, uh, let it be an anchor uh, uh, both sure uh, and steadfast uh, and let every one of us uh, uh, have that hope uh, inside of us uh, uh, to anchor us uh, on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday uh, and Thursday and Friday uh, uh, let Jesus uh, and what he does anchor us uh, and if you begin to wonder uh, and your mind begins uh, uh, to scatter out uh, uh, let go back uh, uh, to the time uh, uh, when you were laden with sin uh, and burning and down uh, uh, with torment uh, uh, chained to you uh, and Jesus uh, uh, when you surrendered uh, and he gave you life uh, and gave you joy uh, uh, go back to that uh, uh, stillness uh, in the eye of that night uh, and reassure yourself uh, I know uh, uh, what happened to me uh, I remember uh, uh, when Jesus uh, uh, saved me that night uh, or that morning uh, I go back there ha, and visit it ha, and it'll be sweet ha, ha, to your soul. Ha, ha, yes, sir. Ha, ha, you, you, ha, ha, don't you realize ha, ha, these preaching brethren, ha, ha, they have to do ha, ha, the same thing. Ha, ha, they have to go back ha, ha, to the time ha, ha, when they're sure ha, ha, without a doubt ha, ha, God did this ha, ha, for us. Ha, ha, we're like you are. Ha, uh, all made out of the same lump. Uh, and we uh, uh, encourage one another. Uh, and we uh, have to go back uh, and be encouraged uh, uh, by the work uh, uh, that Jesus did in us. Uh, uh, we don't need to go back there uh, and lay again all the foundation uh, and talk all these things. Uh, uh, just go back uh, and remember uh, uh, what the good Lord done uh, uh, when He saved our soul. Uh, and it uh, will lift you up uh, uh, my friends uh, and you uh, uh, can look out the end uh, of the row you're plowing uh, and you can plow in hope uh, and in faith uh, and real reach your end uh, uh, just as sure uh, as I'm standing here uh, and while you're plowing uh, uh, somebody else will see uh, uh, that you're plowing
down. It'll encourage them to take a new grip and keep a plowing. We all plow together in God's garden here. That's why he said, come into my vineyard and labor and whatsoever's right. He said, I'll pay you. He'll pay us here and he'll pay us out there. He'll pay us from the time we start till the time that we get to heaven and our payday will be increased. Our rewards, we receive a lot of them right here, right now. And the greatest is out at the end of our road. My friend, Jesus said, a man of hope blessings in this life and in the world to come. Everlasting life. That means we get paid now. We get paid tomorrow and the next day. And the Bible said that it'll be sweet. It'll be strength to us. It'll be encouragement to us. It'll be uplifting to us. It'll be a backbone strength to us that we may conquer. That we may go forth and conquer that that comes before us. And then conquer some more. And then conquer some more. The Bible says we're more than conquerors through Christ which strengthen us. Not in ourselves but in Christ. If we're in Him and living and doing and working like that we'll be more uh, than conquered. Uh, you may never see uh, where your work uh, and your walk in this life uh, uh, what it means to somebody uh, uh, that's watching. Uh, uh, you may never know it uh, uh, but God uh, is at work my friends uh, in every place uh, at all times. Uh, uh, he is a God uh, uh, that's able to work uh, in every direction uh, uh, and death uh, uh, with uh, uh, my friends, uh, uh, there's no limit uh, uh, to what God can do uh, uh, to take your little uh, and bless it uh, and send it ahead. Uh, uh, bless your heart. Uh, uh, he said uh, uh, he uh, would bless our works uh, and make it more fruitful. Uh, uh, my friends, he didn't tell us uh, uh, you'll get all the good out of it, uh, uh, but it may do others uh, uh, some good. Uh, uh, you think, ah, uh, uh, I needed help uh, when I started. Uh, I needed the brethren. Uh, they preached the gospel uh, to me. I needed them. Uh, my friends, after I got right, uh, the mothers uh, and the fathers uh, tutored me along, uh, encouraged me. Uh, we definitely uh, need each other uh, in the family of God. Uh, he said, no, you're not. Uh, that you're the temple uh, of the living God. And that's your spiritual stone. And that's your fitly. That means close. You're put together. God puts us there. He fits us together. And we grow up in the holy tabernacle under God. And He dwells inside that house. My friends, it's His house. It's His body. It's His church. The ground and the pillar of truth. It's His bride of the Lamb's wife and you ought to be a part of it and you ought to stay a part of it oh yes brothers and sisters this gospel right here is perfect turning men and women lives around and keeping us in the straight and narrow that leads to life bless your heart Jesus one time as he lived here, do you realize he only preached his gospel three and a half years? And look what it's done to this world, my friends. Oh, thank God for these work that he done. And Jesus, while he was here one day, he needed to go to Galilee from Judea. And he went to a place called Samaria. And when he went on his way, he came to a place where there was a well. 
And, and God knowed that well was there. He had Jacob to dig it many hundreds of years before that. And Jesus knew he had a reason there because he said, I must needs go to Samaria. He knew there's somebody needed him there. And Jesus, he knows you this morning and he'll come by your way and reveal himself unto you. Why? Because he wants to jump onto you. No siree. Because you need him and he wants to help you. And he will dig down and get right down where you live to help you with your problem. You may think, boy, Jesus is a getting, he's a working me over. But he's doing it because he loves you and he wants to see you saved. And he came by there and my brethren with him. When he got to the well, they sat down there. I told the brethren, go on into town. I get us something to eat. My friends, he needed them to go ahead. Yes, sir. Sometimes you want to be with the crowd, but Jesus. Wants you to be by yourself. I miss my family around there this morning, but I need to come here, and I know that. And when Jesus speaks to you, you should obey Him and go. Let His will be your will. After all, Jesus prayed that night before He died and said, "Father, if there's any other way." I let this cup I pass from me. I don't want to die. I don't want to be rejected. I don't want to be lonely. But I came to accomplish your will here. I'll take that back. I said he didn't want to die. He did. My friend want to accomplish his death. But he dreaded what his flesh and his soul was going to bear. Uh, yes, sir. He, uh, and he asked the Father uh, if there's any other way. Uh, uh, but he boiled it down to this right here. Uh, uh, he said, uh, uh, this is Jesus uh, uh, doing the talking. Uh, not my will, Father, uh, uh, but thy will uh, uh, be done. Uh, and today here, uh, if you ain't got enough uh, uh, gumption inside uh, uh, to say, uh, uh, Jesus, uh, I want I want to do your will. I want to be your servant. And I want to live to please you. My friends, you'll never be a child of God. You'll never be converted. You'll never be a Christian here in this world. It takes a man or woman. Every Christian here has at some time to reach a point where they said, oh Lord, I get my will up and I'm willing to do your will. And that's where Jesus came in and freed us of our load of sin. And we became a brand new creature in Christ. And you'll never get that until you're willing to say, Thy will be done. But Jesus sat down on that well. And here come a woman up in the daytime. I imagine she was lonely. The women traveled together. But she was by herself. She must have been an outcast. Something wrong. They didn't want to travel. Here she come. I'm telling you this because no matter what you are or what you've done or where you've been or what the community may think of you, Jesus 
is here to help you today. And he will accept you if you'll come to him, my friends, and say, I'm willing to do thy will. And that woman come. And Jesus struck up a conversation and said to the woman, would you give me a drink? And she looked at him. She was a Samaritan. He was a Jew. And she said, why would you ask me for a drink? Knowing that we don't deal together. You won't drink out of a cup that I've drunk out of. My friends, I'm here to say Jesus had drunk of the cup and He has invited all of us to come and drink out of the same cup. But you'll have to go through the same thing He did. He died for you and you'll have to die to the sin of this world to be one with Him. For sure, for sure, there's no other way. You'll have to crucify who you are and give your life, your soul, your spirit, your mind, your want to, your heart, whatever you want to call it. You've got to give it to Him and want to be a Christian. You'll not be a Christian by accident. You'll not be called because Jesus knocks you down and wants you to come. He won't do it that way. If you get saved, it'll be on purpose because you have decided you want that more than you want anything else in this world. And some will say, I'll be a Christian when I get His Spirit and feel all these heavenly blessings. Well, i got news for you. You won't get those things until you surrender and be a servant. If you're waiting to get those things before you come forward, you'll die lost in your sins. You don't get all these good things the church is praising God and thanking Him for until you surrender your life to Him and then He will flood your soul with joy unspeakable and full of glory. He'll lift your sins and cast them as far as the east is from the west. That's why He said before anything else in this world give me your whole heart soul, mind, and strength. Seek ye first of the kingdom of heaven and all these things I've got for you I'll give them to you but first you seek out that righteousness that comes from him and he told the woman would you give me a little drink here and she said why you don't deal with me don't drink out of my cup and he said woman if you didn't know who it was that was talking to you uh, you'd have asked me uh, and I'd have give you living water uh, I can see her now uh, uh, smirking around uh, and she said well won't you go ahead and give me a drink in? Uh, give me that living water uh, uh, she never thought uh, uh, Jesus had it uh, uh, she thought he uh, uh, was another babbler uh, uh, making conversation uh, uh, trying to get close to her and she said it uh, uh, with a smirk on her face uh, uh, go ahead and give me uh, some of that living water uh, my friends uh, you'll not get nothing uh, with a smirk on your face uh, or a popping bubble gum uh, you'll have to get this uh, when you get serious uh, with all your heart uh, soul, mind and strength uh, uh, yes uh, and Jesus said well uh, when she said give me uh, she said our father uh, uh, Jacob did I've uh, dug this well here uh, are you better than they are and as she said and Jesus told her I said go call your husband and she said I had none he said you rightly answered you've had five and the one you got now ain't yours but now listen if you want to get close to people and tear them up you name their sin I'm telling you Jesus knew her sin and she never wiped the smirk off of her mouth until Jesus 
Jesus uh, confronted her uh, uh, with her sins. Uh, uh, this morning right here, uh, uh, the same living water uh, is uh, being offered to you. Uh, uh, but you uh, have to know uh, uh, that Jesus uh, is uh, calling you out uh, on your sins. Uh, he already knows them. Uh, he knows you inside out. Uh, he knows everything uh, you ever done. Uh, and if that don't get you serious uh, with God, uh, I don't know what's going to. Uh, but Jesus uh, got serious with her there. Uh, and she got serious. Uh, and she said, Lord, uh, I know uh, uh, that when the Messiah comes, uh, uh, He'll tell First she said uh, about where they worship uh, yeah. and everything. Uh, and she said, we worship uh, in this mountain over here. Uh, you Jews worship in Jerusalem uh, up on that mountain. Uh, which one is the right mountain? Yeah. Uh, and Jesus uh, uh, told her uh, uh, the time has come uh, uh, that the true worshiper uh, uh, will worship God uh, in spirit uh, and in truth. Uh, and he said uh, uh, the time is coming uh, and now he yeah. The they that worship him shall worship him in spirit and in truth tonight, this morning. You can lay all your baggage of sin to the side and worship God in spirit and in truth. He's came by your way and he's begging to you to let him in. If don't turn him away. Uh, don't turn Jesus away. Uh, let him come in. Uh, you can sup with him uh, and he'll sup with you. Uh, you can drink out uh, of the same cup uh, all over this world today. Oh, bless God. Praise the Lord. Uh, uh, and uh, oh, yes. Uh, and she uh, said, I know. Uh, I've heard it all my life. It's written in the Old Testament. And our fathers has told us that there's a Messiah that's going to come. And when He comes, He shall tell us all things. And Jesus looked at her and He said these words. I that speak to you am He. Yes, sir. He. I'm telling you, Jesus will come close uh, uh, today. Uh, he'll name your sin uh, and tell you uh, I'll let you in. Uh, that woman ran into the city. Uh, uh, she helped a bunch of uh, uh, people that day. Uh, that's what we say. Uh, uh, one person uh, uh, can help a whole group uh, uh, by just showing up. Uh, uh, she went into the city. I uh, uh, said, come. I uh, uh, see a man uh, that told me everything uh, ever i done. Uh, and it's a Christ. Uh, oh, Oh, yes, uh, they run out uh, listen to him uh, and they come back and told her uh, uh, well uh, we believe him uh, for ourselves now uh, because we've heard him my friends listen yeah. Jesus will come close to you today he will name your sin to you and tell you he's here to give you a drink of living water and if you'll take him up as being the Messiah you can go back and tell your friend what good things the Lord has done for you. Yeah, no I'm telling you, He's made me wise on a many of things in my life. Yeah. When I first started out, I'll tell you, I thought I had it all worked out. And I've had to change my mind yeah. about things that I've preached right from the stand. All oh, for years, I said to myself, I'll never take a, a man to the water with liquor on his breath. But all one night, Jesus passed by and he said, Tommy, what are you going to do if that man wants to join the church? Yeah. I talked to the brother. They said, take him. And sure as I'm a living, when I got to the house, I got a phone call. Yeah. Said, be down there. He wants baptized. We loaded up and we went. And the good spirit of God Bless me from head to toe. I know it was real. And we took that man down there with liquor on his breath and baptized him. Yeah. And he raised and he ain't missed the lick. My friend, the doctor said, it's impossible that he can come off of it. A dry shot. 
Oh, when he went back to the doctor. Oh, that doctor was a crime. Oh, son, you blessed me and helped me to see what you've done. I didn't think it was possible. But with God, he can take care of everything that you need in this life. And he healed that, that good friend of mine. It's one of the best brothers I got now. And he conquered it with Christ's help. He conquered it. I'm saying, my friend, no matter where sin has took you, how far down the river you went, if you'll take a hold of the hand of Jesus, he'll give you the power. He has the authority to say to demons flee yeah. to the wind and the rain to stand still he has all power and any child that will come to him he'll make a way I, re- I found in this book right here that God will never call you or send you or ask you to do anything but what he has grace ain't laying out the way for you to do it man he would never invite you to come if, he didn't, if you couldn't do it you can come you can conquer the booger. You can conquer anything that's been eating in and on at you. Yeah. It may have been years. And the old booger man, he may have had something working inside of you that you just can't get past by yourself. And it's eating you and it's gnawed at you. And it's caused you to be plum miserable in this world. But I'm telling you, if you'll unload and say, my mind is to do your will, Jesus. If you'll... I'm here, I'm going to serve you no matter what. You'll find him to be the dearest friend, right. the ultimate savior, yes. and he will rescue you and pardon you from all your sins and all your own good. And he'll set your feet on a solid rock. Yeah. Yeah, man. And you'll find yourself, instead of going like this in life, you'll find yourself strengthening up or straightening up, and you'll feel him stiffen your backbone to fight this sin that's in this world. They will be a war from head to start to finish. And my friends, it'll get worse the closer you live to him. That's right, that's right. I'll tell you it will. Yeah. But the one that's fighting the hardest, that's out on the end, out on the front lines, Jesus is right beside us. Yeah. We don't fear for our earthly lives. No. We're willing to give this life up. We know that to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. We know that to die and leave here on our deathbed and draw our last breath is to have an abundance of grace come flooding in in our last moment of breath in this life Amen. and abundantly wipe away the memory of all things carnal yep. Yep. and be totally spiritual, which words that the men couldn't put in the Bible, Tony, because there's no words to satisfy the feeling of dying, knowing that Christ is your Savior. The how joyous it is to die that way cannot be uttered with human word. My friend, I've had a couple lately up in their 90s ask me about the sting of death. The sting of death, you'll not get stung like a hornet at death. There'll not be something called on and go bzzz. And sting you. The sting of sin is now. It's sin. And that's what stings us every day. And when we draw our last breath, that sting will be gone. And forever we'll never feel the touch of sin no more in our life. And we'll live eternally when this life is over. That would have caused any of us to want to go. No wonder the brethren said, it's better to go ahead. No wonder some said, Lord, I just assume to ask to stay. They are living close. They know what I'm talking about and telling you this morning. I'm telling you. But by no wonder the Bible said it's blessed. To blessed are the dead that die in the Lord. Yeah. From this time forward, yeah. they rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Never nothing bad. All the bad will be while we live here. Yeah. And we've got a promise of being able to bust through all of it. If we follow Jesus, he'll bust through all of it. Yeah. I'll hurt. I'll hurt. I'm hurt now over a lot of things. But I get up every day and say, Lord, help get me through this day. I don't know how to handle this situation. I don't know what to say to this person. Do I even speak to this person? Sometimes they tell Tony, as hard as it is, he said, don't speak to him. Yeah. Knowledge him and go ahead. Yeah. And that's what I do. 
Sometimes it's hard not to speak because I love everybody, my friend. But I'm telling you what, he will guide you. Right. He'll tell you how to act. He'll tell you what to say. He'll tell you when not to say. He'll tell you when to go, when to come, my friend. And I promise you, if you'll follow him, he'll bless your deeds, and you'll be glad that you did what he said. Amen. A lot of things, but I think I will quit right there. Thank you. What a blessing. It is. I really like the way Brother Tommy does. And if you notice, he's not interested in being able to quote every word of the scripture. I can't never quote. He may just quote two or three words of a scripture, half the scripture, but he wants to tell you what it means. And he's told us today what it means to be a Christian. We'll follow that. Heaven will be your home. Yeah. Just like it Number eight. While we sing, for Tommy stand out front there. The church door is open. We've heard the gospel here today. Amen. It can change an individual. It's what he chose to do that through the foolishness of preaching to save them. Right. That would do what? Believe. Believe what? Believe, Believe. what we've been listening to. Today. Yeah. It can save you down on the inside. Yeah. I pray that somebody will turn it all over to a new life. Careless soul, why will you linger? Wandering from the fold of God. Hear you not the invitation? Oh, prepare to meet thy God. Oh!
glad that will be. May we never have repaired. Tommy, go ahead and extend the invitation now. I'm going to start this next song. I kind of like to hang to what our old preacher did. It helped me. And they'd, uh, they'd say, are there anybody in this building today that wants to be a Christian before you die? Would you come up here and shake hands and let the church be a praying for you? And when I wasn't really interested yet, I know God wanted to be a Christian before I died, and I let it help me, and it helped me. Yeah. It helped me to feel the church praying for me and helped that I and I stepped out and I go back home and I go back up the road feeling good that I did that even though I was hurting because I wasn't a Christian I was feeling good that I, I know that I did the right thing Right. and so while they, while they start this song right here if there's anybody with that mind you want to be a Christian before you die want the church to pray before you want you come up and just shake hands with us and you go right back to your seat and, and the church will know that you would like to be a Christian before you die and they'll be a prayer for you all this age Once a man named Stephen preached about the Lord. Folks were saved and folks were healed as they heard his word. Satan did not like it. Soon he had his crowd. And as he was tried, they heard Stephen cry
how the devil works. In October of 2012, I was at Brush Creek Church in a revival. Brother Tommy and Brother Tony was preaching. And I was a sinner. And a little bit into the service when the preacher got up, I can't even remember which one of them got up. But the Lord was working on me. Yeah. And it was time for me to come out of there. And I said in silence, I didn't want to disrupt the service. Which looking back on it was the wrong thing to do. <coughs> if you feel the Lord tugging at your heart, it don't matter if the preacher's in the stand or not, come forward. <coughs> That's right. Yeah. But I sat through that service, and during the time, my dad, I knew that I, I wanted to be baptized that night. My dad had had a heart problem not too long before that. Brother Tom had had heart problems. And I let the devil sit there and talk to me and tell me, well, what if, what if they baptized me in that creek out there and something happens to them? They got families. They got other people that depend on them. That's how the devil works. That's right. He does not want you to come out of sin. He's got you exactly where he wants you. Amen. The brother preached it today exactly the way it needed to be preached. He didn't come here to save the righteous people. He came for the sinners and the ungodly. Amen. Amen. He came and shed his blood for everyone. If you take hold of it, <coughs> don't let the devil talk you out of coming forward when you feel the Lord has forgiven you and you're ready to come out of sin. That's right. Amen. He'll try his best to. That's right. That's how you know, it works. Question, Brother Adam. Being saved isn't the last step. You know, you... If you ever wait and think, I'm, I'm going to wait until, you know, I'm knowledgeable. Wait until you're, you know, free from sin. You're not going to be free from sin. No. The that's first right. step is being saved. You know, giving yourself to Jesus, that's when sin's going to start going away. It's the first Amen. step, not the last. Amen. That's right. Bless you, brother. Bless you. By it. A lot of people are going to leave here today feeling a lot better. Amen. I know I am. It's been a good place. Well, I just felt want to leave right now. <laughs> I'm just glad I was able to come. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah, well, bless you. Anybody else? If not, any announcements need to be made? I can't find the lady anymore. Good echo tonight. Enjoy having any of you more to come. A revival at Paul's Chapel starts next Sunday. Starts night. next Sunday night at Paul's Chapel, the twelfth, seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. Of course, church back here Friday night as well. We glad to have all of you come back every Sunday. Hearts and minds free. If so, I ask you to bow your heads and uh, Brother Michael, pray dismission for us. Lord Heavenly Father, I thank you for helping us all to be able to come here today. Yes, Lord. Right. Your yes, wonderful right. preaching about you. And just, you know, I felt your spirit here today, and I know most everyone here did. And Lord, anyone that, you know, I've been here a few times, and I've seen wonderful services like this that I didn't really feel too much. If there was anyone here today who felt like that. You know, I just ask that you help them to seek you out more and yes, help them to keep coming here. And, yeah. you know, they'll they'll feel it. You know, I definitely felt it today. Yeah, me too. Thank the Lord. Lord, I just thank you, Lord, for helping me and for helping all of us oh. today. In Christ Jesus' holy name, I pray. Amen. 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 Everybody be careful out there. <laughs>